This week on The Anxious Truth, we're going to talk about how to slay your anxiety dragon in 2022. Well, we're really going to talk about how to start slaying it when we learn that anxiety recovery is really about building a bunch of little recovery habits and then stringing them together. So let's get started. Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is the Anxious Truth Podcast, episode number 189, 189. Happy New Year. This is our first show of 2022. If this is your first time listening to The Anxious Truth or watching on YouTube, I am Drew Linsalata. I'm creator and host of this podcast. The Anxious Truth is a podcast that talks about all things anxiety and anxiety recovery. So if you're having problems like panic attacks, panic disorder, agoraphobia, that sort of stuff, this is the place you want to be. You are welcome here at all times. If you are a returning listener or a longtime listener, welcome back. I appreciate your time and attention as always. Today's episode is really all about the idea that anxiety recovery does not happen in big leaps and bounds. It's not dramatic. It's not epic. If anxiety is a dragon and you're trying to slay it, you don't slay it with one swing of your sword. You actually slay it with like a thousand paper cuts, probably more like 27,000 paper cuts, to be honest with you. So we're going to talk about that today. But before we get started, I want to remind you of one little thing. And that is on January 3rd, just a couple of days ago, I launched a project called The Anxious Morning. And The Anxious Morning, first of all, it's off, it's off to a great start. Everybody's really enjoying it. It is a little email newsletter and podcast that comes out every weekday morning. So it's a quick anxiety recovery lesson, something to think about, tips and tricks, techniques, uh, things that will make you think, things that will make you talk, uh, all related to anxiety and anxiety recovered recovery delivered into your email inbox every morning when you wake up. So you don't have to go scrolling through the frantic kind of doom scroll of social media to get it. It's a three to 500 word email. You can consume it at your own time at your own leisure and then use it as you see fit. There is also a podcast associated with it, which is essentially just the audio version of that email, three to five minutes long every weekday morning. Everybody's loving it. Go check it out at theanxiousmorning.com. It's 100% free to subscribe. So take advantage of it. If you like this podcast, you're going to really dig that too. There's a little snippets every weekday morning that I think you'll find really helpful. Okay, so that uh, being said, and by the way, if you're already subscribed and you're enjoying The Anxious Morning, thank you for your support. I appreciate that. So let's get into this. Everybody wants, especially around the new year, right? So we just had the new year. Everybody wants to overcome their anxiety in 2022, and that is completely doable, of course. But again, if you look at an anxiety disorder as a dragon that needs to be slayed, we have to realize that this is not a thing where we whip out our giant sword and, you know, in one fell swoop, we sway the dragon, slay the dragon in, in one epic dramatic move. It doesn't work that way. This is really a journey of very small steps that just add up, right? So recovery is granular. It happens in really tiny bits. It's a result of very small changes and small individual experiences, and they add up over time. So it doesn't come in giant leaps and broad sweeps. And it really is about starting small and building new recovery-focused habits and practicing them and being incremental and consistent and then adding them all together. But the key word here is habits. We have to start to develop these habits. So there are quite a few of them that go into uh, you know the overall recovery process, I'm sure, and they're very individual based on your particular circumstance. But to get the ball rolling, especially if you're feeling kind of stuck and you're thinking like, okay, this is going to be my year. I'm going to get over this anxiety once and for all. The way to do that is to build a bunch of recovery-focused habits, take these small little steps every day, string them together, be consistent, and over time, your relationship with anxiety and fear begins to change because of all these habits, habits that, that you're, you're gluing together, together and stringing together, together. They add up, and they add up small habits that you practice every single day add up to big changes over time. So let's look at five. Let's really start with just five of these little recovery-focused habits that you can work on that are almost universal to everybody's situation. So these are five to start with. But if you're confused, if you're not really sure what to do, let's start with these five habits. Now, why do we need to develop these habits? Because in the end, what we're really trying to do is we're not trying to banish anxiety. So the dragon metaphor, eh, it's okay. But we're really not trying to kill our anxiety because you can't. Like anxiety actually belongs in a human life. We're really just trying to go back to a normal, healthy relationship with it. And the way we do that is we learn to recognize these maladaptive responses that we have to the feelings of anxiety, symptoms and thoughts that come with it, and then we start to change those reactions. So we need to recognize the reactions that are getting us into this mess, and then we have to start to change those. And people will ask all the time, but how do I change my reaction? How do I do this? Well, you change your reaction to anxiety, panic, and fear over time 
by building new habits and practicing them. So this is where habits come into play, right? You can't just decide to react differently to your anxiety. You have to start to change your behavior little by little, bit by bit. You practice this every day, day after day, again and again and again, and you do enact change over time. Now, this is not years and years of time, but it's not days. This is not a thing where, okay, I'm going to give you some, here's top five tips to make your anxiety go away, go away in two weeks. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. It just doesn't. But we can start with these five habits that you can start to work on building these habits and practicing them, putting them into your life every day. And this will help you to answer the question, how do I change my relationship and my reaction to anxiety? I know it's scary. I know it's really difficult. I know you feel like you must react in fear. You must stop it. You must escape. You must get saved. You must get help. I know you think that, but it's actually not true. And when we start to change that and say, okay, don't have to do it that way anymore. I can do it a different way, a way that is difficult and requires me to be courageous, to, especially to start. And we're going to do these hard and scary things to start to change this reaction that I have and get anxiety back to a normal, healthy place in my life. We can start with these little habits, these five habits, right? So it's important. To, I do have a quote in the show note show notes that I want to, I don't normally read verbatim from the show notes, but I'm going to on this one because I think it's important. So a lot of people will think I'm going to run over my anxiety. This is the year that I, I win the war. Like I'm going to be a warrior. I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to slay this dragon. But here's the quote I want you to, to really hang on to. And that is, we do not turn into courageous anxiety dragon slayers overnight. We build a bunch of new dragon slaying habits on a small scale. We keep practicing them then we string them together over time. This is not dramatic, epic, or fast. In fact, it can be somewhat boring and will try your patience, but this is how it works. So that is like if you go to the anxious truth.com slash 189, which is the show notes for this episode, you can find that quote. I put it on the page and I wanted to read it verbatim because I think it's important. This is not dramatic. It's not epic. It's not fast. You can't just decide to become a warrior and brave and run it over and I'm going to kick its ass. It doesn't work that way. I, again, I wish it did, but it doesn't. This is a journey of small steps that add up together. We will slay that dragon with 100,000 paper cuts, not with one slash of a big old broadsword. It isn't going to happen. So let's look at five habits that you can work on that might be new for you. But if you start to work on these five habits to start, it can get you on the way. This is not meant to be a cure for your anxiety. This isn't five things to do to make it go away. This isn't therapy. This isn't medical advice. But these are five really simple habits that you can start to build into your day that will help you at least move in the right direction. So let's get started. The first one is start, habit number one is start your day in a new way. Now, this one is really difficult for a lot of people. If you're listening, you may have a lot of anxiety in the morning. Now, some people have more anxiety in the evening, but nonetheless, what we want to do here is we want to look at starting the, the day in a new way. If your habit is that you wake up in the morning, however way you wake up after however way you slept, and I understand a lot of you may be having sleep problems. If your habit right now is to lay in bed and stay under those covers and dread getting up and dread facing the day and think about how you feel and scan your body and, and evaluate how you feel, how anxious am I? How anxious will I be today? Am I going to panic today? Is anything going to make me panic today? What, what am I going to think about today? Am I going to have symptoms today? If that is the way you start your morning, consider that you should start your morning in a new way. And what I always tell people to do is to get up. When you open your eyes, get up, put your feet on the floor, come up with a very basic morning routine, a very basic routine. It could be all hygiene based, literally brushing your teeth, washing your face, like combing your hair putting something on to wear, putting your slippers on. It doesn't matter. A very basic morning routine that starts with putting your feet on the floor and ends with feeding yourself breakfast or a cup of coffee or tea or something and sitting in the kitchen and reading the paper, the paper, like who the hell has paper anymore? But you get the idea. A very basic morning routine, you wake up, you put your feet on the floor and you execute those that routine no matter how you feel. This is a good habit. This is a recovery-focused habit that will propel you forward. It will be part of your recovery journey if you can put this into play. Wake up, get up, run your routine. It doesn't matter how you feel. You know what you're going to do. I get up, I walk across the room, I go to the bathroom, I wash my face, I brush my teeth, I comb my hair, I put my robe on, I go into the kitchen, I make an egg or some oatmeal. 
Whatever it is you do, I don't care what your morning routine is. Just have a routine. Know what it is before you wake up and then run it when you wake up. This habit, when you do this every day, begins to change your relationship with anxiety. Because you think that if you wake up anxious or apprehensive about the day, you're supposed to lay there and ruminate on that and worry about it and think about it. But that's not a productive way to relate to your anxiety. A more productive way would be this. I can get up. I can run my morning routine even when I feel anxious and afraid. I can do that. And you begin to teach your brain, like, I can do this. I'm capable even when I am afraid and anxious. So starting your day in a new way is habit number one. I urge you to consider doing that. Habit number two. And by the way, let me turn off my notifications here. I'm getting a lot of Slack notifications as I record. So habit number two, and by the way, I wrote a whole lot about that morning routine in chapter five of The Anxious Truth, which is my recovery guidebook. So if you don't have that book, you can find it at theanxioustruth.com. Um, and I wrote about this extensively there. Habit number two is actually based on another book I wrote called 7% Slower, which you can find at 7%slower.com. Habit number two is slow down. Just slow down. If you are like most anxious people, hell, most non-anxious people, we rush through our day. So if you are having a problem with anxiety, there is a really good chance that when anxiety hits and you feel it begin to rise, you begin to rush. You begin to rush mentally. You begin to rush physically. Anxiety will tell you to speed up and run around. And if you are kind of in the grips of it, you will listen and you'll do that and you'll start rushing around. So habit number two, two that, that I can give you would be to recognize this and begin to slow things down. Now, you, you can decide to slow down and keep practicing it again and again and again. Like I said, I wrote an entire book about that called 7% Slower if you want to check it out. But it's really about catching the habit of, oh, I'm, I'm doing it again. I'm rushing again. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. When you intentionally slow yourself down physically, it becomes a little bit easier to be present, to be a little bit mindful of what you're engaged with right now. And when you slow down, we're going back to changing our relationship with anxiety, slowing down is sending another signal back down to your brain that says everything's okay. So when you get up in the morning and brush your teeth and run your morning routine, even when you're anxious, you're telling your brain everything's okay. Your brain is saying nothing's okay. You have to show it with these habits. No, everything's okay. So getting up and running your routine shows you, tells your brain everything's okay. Slowing down when it wants you to speed up tells your brain everything's okay. So now we have two little habits that you can start on this year that start to change your relationship with anxiety and fear and bring it back into its normal place. Number three, habit number three is, is a big one. This one is one that most people don't understand and sometimes get misinterpreted, right? Habit number three is wait before you speak your fear. And when I say speak your fear, I mean if you are in the habit, which most anxious people are, of always having to tell somebody how you feel. If I am afraid, if I am anxious, if I am worried about something, if I'm feeling symptoms I don't like, if I'm having thoughts I don't like, if I just feel unease, discomfort, vulnerability, uncertainty, fear, I have to tell somebody. Usually it's going to be your safe person or your comfort person. I need to tell them how I'm feeling right now. I need to tell them what I'm afraid of. I got to tell you that I'm anxious. I have to tell you that my heart is pounding. I have to tell you that I'm dizzy. I have to tell you that, you know, I think I'm going to die. I have to tell you that I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to have a seizure. Before you speak that fear out loud, put in a pause. So the habit here is set a timer on your watch, your phone. I don't care. Count it in your head. Before you decide that you need to speak out loud again how you feel, put in a pause 60 to 90 seconds. Wait. Just give it 90 seconds. At the end of that 90 seconds, wait another 90 seconds. And then ask yourself, what is, what is this going to accomplish when I speak my fear out loud? You are in the habit of relating to that alarm. So your brain is sounding an alarm when it doesn't have to. That's this anxiety problem. And you are in the habit of relating to that alarm by answering it like it's real. So when your brain triggers that alarm that says something is wrong and you run to your partner or your sister or your best friend or whoever it happens to be and you have to say something is wrong, something is wrong, I think I have to go to a hospital, something is wrong, something's wrong with me, or I think I'm going to go crazy, I can't take this anymore, you are responding to that alarm in a, in a reaction that says, yeah, that's the, something's wrong. When we pause and we do not speak that fear out loud, this is difficult, but we're sending a signal back down again that says, I don't have to talk about this. It's okay. It's always been okay. 
So again, habit number three that says when my brain tells me that something is wrong, but I know there's not, I'm going to tell it everything is okay. And I'm going to tell it this with this new behavioral habit. I'm going to act differently. Get up in the morning and run your routine. Uh, The second one was start to slow down. The third one now is wait before you speak your fear. Put in those pauses and really detach from that that impulse and ask yourself, what is this going to do for me? Not sure what this is going to do for me. And see if you really feel that you need to speak it out loud again. Now, you might have to repeat this 25 times every day, but this is how we build habits, right? And we're the motivation to build these habits, build these new habits that we don't have now. We change the old habits and build new ones. The motivation is that when we do this, we are engaging in a process that teaches our brains the lessons it needs to learn. So we're not doing these things because it's going to flip the anxiety switch. This isn't really outcome habits. This is process habits. I need to start to have a different process that I use to relate to anxiety and fear. And this is going to lead me to a better place in my life. So habit number four, I say is called regulate your anxiety information diet. Not diet which you eat, your anxiety information diet. Start to really think about this. So this is also a really overlooked thing that's kind of easy to get to. This is a behavioral change that you can make that isn't really that hard to find and do. If you are spending all day long in the social media scroll of doom, and by the way, this is one of the reasons why I launched The Anxious Morning, was to help people get useful anxiety information without having to scroll, do the doom scroll all day long to find this stuff. That's one, that was one of my motivations. I don't like the endless, frantic social media scroll of doom in mental health. I actually hate it. And so I said, all right, I want to get out of the middle of that. I'm going to, I'm going to take this discussion out of that. That's why I launched the Anxious Morning email and podcast. But if you are spending all day long scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Facebook, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, reading 16 anxiety books, I'm in this program, I have this anxiety app, I'm in this group, I follow this guru and that guru, If you spend all day long listening to podcasts and reading anxiety books and going through anxiety groups and and all of that stuff all day long, it's time to regulate that diet. Pick one or two trusted sources. Maybe I'm one of them. I don't know. That would be great. Maybe I'm not. Maybe you're going to pick a different source than me. That's okay, too. You pick one or two trusted sources and stick with them, and everything else is going to have to go by the wayside. Now, that might sound crazy to you, but it's not because... Again, your reaction to this fear, your anxiety and fear, in the way you consume social media is basically saying, yeah, yeah, this is bad. Something has to happen. I have to find a fix. I need a fix. I need a fix. I need a fix. I need something to fix me. Fix me, fix me, fix me. I need tips. I need tricks. No, you don't. So when you regulate your anxiety information diet is habit number four, and you start to pare that down. No, no, I'm only going to listen to one podcast. I have this one book that I'm reading. I'm going to finish that book. I'm not going to spend all day trying to consume anxiety and recovery information. You are treating that alarm, that that anxiety as less important. So no, I don't need to frantically search for a fix for this. I can educate myself with one or two trusted sources. That's all I need. That is another way behaviorally to send a signal back down to your brain that says, I got this. Everything's okay. I know you're trying to protect me, but look, everything's okay. We don't need to buy another book. We don't need to listen to yet another podcast. We don't need to find another guru to follow to help us reframe this. Try regulating your anxiety information diet. That's habit number four. Cut down on the amount of doom scrolling and mental health that you're doing. It's not helping you. So it's an easy habit to just to pick and start to change. And you know what? Give yourself a time frame. I'm going to leave these 10 groups behind. I'm going to only watch. I'm going to only follow these four accounts or whatever it is. Listen to these two podcasts. That's it. Give it a week or two. If you want to ditch those and go to different sources, that's great. But only have one or two trusted sources at a time. That is a good way to regulate your anxiety information diet, and it's a good recovery-focused habit to get into. Number five, here's the fifth habit that you can start start with. Start Start to to record record your your wins wins, no matter how small they are. This is important also because when you are in that that reactivity mode where every time your brain sounds an alarm, you say, okay, alarm, 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 and you you find ways to react to it as if it's real, we lose our sense of judgment there. We see everything through a lens of fear and negativity. Everything went wrong. I felt terrible. I was so afraid. 
I felt like I was going to pass out. I thought I was going to go insane. I'm so afraid that I'm going to have a seizure. I'm afraid I'm going to go insane or become psychotic. And we just play those things over and over and over and over. So we lose sight of the fact that reality shows us that those things don't happen. Or when you go out and do an exposure, if your therapist is giving you exposure to do, you do your exposure, you complete it successfully. You've done the, the task. Or you've met a life challenge, something came up, oh my God, I had to pick up my son at school, I wasn't planning to do that. I did it. Instead of spending the rest of the day telling yourself how terrible that was because of how you felt and what you thought was going to happen, record the win. And the story is essentially, I just did a really hard thing and I did it and I was okay. I was just uncomfortable and afraid. So start taking some time, 10 minutes before bed. Do it in your phone, record a voice memo, scroll it on a napkin, get a notebook, it doesn't matter. But one really easy habit that you can start to work on is to record your wins, right? So I'm not telling you to not write down your thoughts and feelings. That's totally fine if you want to do that. But make sure you're balancing that by also recording reality. I felt terrible all day today, but nothing actually happened. I made dinner. I took care of the kids. I went to work. I actually did it. I was in two meetings. I did it. Even though I felt terrible, I did it. That's a win. You have to start to record those wins and recognize them so that the overwhelming negative, I must say, stay safe thoughts do not dominate all the time. If you do not do this, you will fall into the trap of always judging every situation based on how you feel or felt or what you thought was going to happen. So you start to record your wins, which is essentially everything that I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And even though I felt so afraid and incapable, I actually did the task. I did it. So record your wins so that reality can start to creep in and, and, and weigh in on this. Don't let only the fear and the negative thoughts take over. So those are our five habits. Those are our five recovery-focused habits that you can start. If you want to slay the dragon in 2022, you're going to have to build a bunch of these new reaction habits and use them consistently, string them together. They will add up every time you don't speak your fear, every time you unfollow another mental health account, every time you sit and write a 10-minute journal entry at night to, to describe how you won that day, not just how terrible it was. Every time you do that, that's another little paper cut on the dragon. That's another little paper cut on the dragon. And so and facetiously, I started by saying it's 27,000 paper cuts or it's 100,000 paper cuts. It literally is. Like this is every time we engage in one of these little five habits. And then you begin to build more recovery-focused habits on top of this. Every time you engage in one, it's another little paper cut, another little cut, another little cut. And sooner or later, you slay the dragon. So the outcome does happen over time. If you're in 2022 with that new year, new year all charged up, I'm going to, this is the year, this is my year. Know that the way your year looks, air quotes, your, this is my year, is this. A lot of little habits taken consistently, incrementally. You glue them together. You string them together. You build on top of each other. And slowly, you slay that dragon. Slowly, you build a new, more productive, healthy relationship with anxiety and fear. That's how this works. So there you go. Let's go over the habits one more time before we head on out. The five habits that you can use to start to slay your dragon bit by bit is, number one, start your day in a new way. Do not lie there ruminating and worrying about your day. Get up and do something productive. I don't care how small it is. Hygiene habits are fine to start with. It doesn't matter. Get up, put your feet on the floor, and run that plan every morning. Show yourself and your brain that you can do it even when you think you can't. Number two, slow down. Do the best that you can to slow down when anxiety is telling you to speed up. This is difficult. You have to keep reminding yourself, slow down, slow down, slow down, but you can do it. You can do it. And the more you do it, every time you slow down, instead of speeding up, it's another paper cut on the dragon. Number three, wait to speak your fear before you want to tell somebody again how terrible and awful this is, how you feel. You want to tell them your symptoms. Check it out. Check my symptoms. Is this right? Does this sound, is this really anxiety? Am I okay? Put in those pauses, 90 seconds, another 90 seconds. Ask yourself, what am I accomplishing here? Fourth one was regulating your anxiety information diet. Get your head out of the endless doom scroll of Instagram and Facebook mental health. Much of it is not helping you at all. I would hope that I'm helping you, but maybe I'm not either. I don't know. You'll have to evaluate that yourself. 
But in the end, get out of the endless scroll. Regulate your anxiety information diet. Immersing yourself all day long in social media content and internet content about anxiety and recovery is not good for you. Cut that down. One or two trusted sources, give them a run for a week or two. If you want to switch those sources, go ahead, but cut that down. And number four, number five, the last habit in this episode is start to record your wins. The wins. Every day you have them. If if nothing more than I got up this morning and I and I took a shower and I got dressed. I fed myself. I got the kids off to school. That's a win. That's a win. Start to record those wins. It matters. Otherwise, you will get stuck in, this was such a horrible day. This was so horrible. I felt like I was going to go insane. My DPDR is so bad. I think I'm going to lose my mind. You will get stuck in that pattern. Interrupt it by taking 10 minutes at night before you go to bed to record the wins for the day. I don't care what they are. It doesn't matter how small they matter. So there you go. Those are your five, what I would like to think would be anxiety-focused habits that you can kind of jump on in 2022 to start to slay that dragon little, little bits at a time. Right, guys? So that's it. This is episode 189. We're done. I'm out of here. I'm going to play you out this song right here. This is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. You can find Ben and his music at bendrakemusic.com. Check him out. He's a great guy, and he lets me use that song, which I love. Uh, If you're listening to the podcast on iTunes or Spotify or any place where you can rate and review, leave us a five-star rating, write a review. It really helps out in the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that, the whole nine yards. And that's it, guys. If you don't know The Anxious Morning, if you haven't checked it out, go to theanxiousmorning.com and check out my little daily email newsletter and podcast comes out every weekday morning. You're going to dig that, too. That's it. I'll see you guys next week in the next episode. Don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. And remember, this is the way. Yeah, you're doing fine. It's all around you. You can breathe it in. This is where your story begins. You got the feeling that you're going to win.